Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today I'm here with my buddy Angus Wacker, and we are going to be pulling this 1964 F100 out of its snowy grave and putting it back on the road for the first time in, I think he said nine years. Nine, nine years. So like I just mentioned, this is a 1964 F100 that we found out here at what is an abandoned school in the middle of Nevada, Iowa. This used to be a Seventh-day Adventist school up until the 80s from like the early 1900s. Most of the structures have been torn down, but the ones that remain are in rough shape at best. And we were out here trying to revive a big block Mopar the other day at negative 11 degrees. It didn't go too well, but we'll be back to that someday. Either way, while we were out here, we saw this. Came down and took a look at it and decided this is way too good of a truck to pass up on. So Angus gave the guy 500 bucks and he now has a 64 F100 with a 292 Y block and a four speed. Well, like you said, we're looking at a 292 Y block. I don't know much about them at all. This is the first Ford I've ever actually owned. I'm, really? I'm pretty sure I'm still wearing my Chevrolet belt buckle from high school. <laughs> but uh, she seems pretty straightforward from what little research I did. This is the first, uh, overhead valve V8 that Ford came out with. This engine was the successor for the flathead V8, which we're all very familiar with. Uh, from what I read, they have their quirks, such as a really weak upper oiling system, like for the valve train and whatnot. But beyond that, they tend to be a fairly stout little motor. I have faith that we'll be able to get this running. I've never worked on a Y block. I've also never seen a Y block that's spun over. Is this thing even seized? <laughs> Do we know? You know what? We paid the man after having walked down here, peeked in the windows, didn't even open the hood. We just like looked at it and went, this is cool. Went and paid the man. And so <laughs> you guys are getting to see the first look at it, just like, well, I guess both of us are. It so way better than I anticipated. It looks like someone's done the brakes maybe at some point. Yeah, otherwise that plastic probably would have disintegrated. Yeah, she's got a little little wetness going on here, but that's fine. Oh, that's Where the hell? Oh, the distributor's in the rear. Whoa, it's all tilty. Oh, it's on this side. Man, What's that's that? weird. I've never worked on a Y block before. It's got a lot going on. Oh, it's got, uh, looks like somebody's been in here before. Because they've got the nice uh, catch on fire fuel filter. The fuel <laughs> wait, pump wait. is uh, Hang on. What circled is that? off. What is that line? Yeah. It, oh, there's a. <laughs> There's, there's a little electric pump oh, there down there on the oh, frame. Oh, there's a clicky clackety. Dude, this might be way too easy of a revival. We're going to throw a battery in this and the dang thing's going to have power and well, want to move fuel. Does it turn? Oh, I got turnage. She spins? Yep. Oh, she spins real nice. I don't think that's a factory alternator. No, it, it looks just like a Chevy alternator. If I'm honest, ow. Yeah, that right there is a GM one wire, my dude. Hmm. Well, that makes things easy. Neato. One thing I forgot to mention is that it is one degree out today. Yeah. So we tried to do a revival on the big block Mopar I mentioned at negative 13 or negative 11 or something. Yep. And failed. I think mostly because it was a big block Mopar. Yeah, it was not turning over. If we had it on a brand new battery and a jump pack at the same time, it was just not spinning like, rrr, fast rrr. enough. You'll see that video someday. I hope to return to that truck, but we're out here. We're going to try it again. This is pretty much, a, again, a sub-zero revival. We're kind of sheltered from the wind over here, but it is, it's one of those days where it's just cold and it hurts. Yeah, it's a big wet cold today. Yeah, I'm already shivering. We've been out here for like five minutes, so. <laughs> you already got ice on your beard. Oh, good. Oh, so do you. Do I really? Yeah, you got a little bit on your mustache. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> is our carb stuck? That is a fair question. This linkage is pretty, wow. Oh, okay. She moves. The whole thing moves. It looks like our accelerator pump is seized. The oh, yes. push rod isn't moving worth a darn, but that's not a big deal. Probably have to go through that carb anyway. It's been sitting for nine years. We talked to the guy. He didn't really say why he stopped driving it. From what little we gathered, this was his dad's truck. And it spent time down in Tennessee. I think he, he was talking about lakes, so I think Minnesota for a little while. And then it was here in Iowa for a while. And then his dad passed away and left him the truck. He drove it for a while and then he just stopped driving it. And that was the end of the story. But I think we'll be able to get this to fire up. Oh, dude, this thing will run. You got keys for it, right? I sure do. You want to throw a battery in and see if anything happens? 
Yep. Oh, let's check the oil first. That's a good idea. Usually we go through the points and all this and that to make sure that when we hit the key it fires right off. But it's also usually not one degree outside. So it's about a quart low. But it has it. It does. And we'll, just as soon as we know that it runs and we get it back somewhere where it's not all snowy and frozen, we'll give her a good oil change and go through everything, make sure she's tip top. Because I intend to drive this thing around. Our plan here is to get this truck running right here in the snow where it's been sitting for the last nine years at one degree outside and then probably tow it over to the new shop and work on it there in the heat and get it drivable and put her back on the road. Yeah. Is that door open? Oh yeah, it does. It do open. Ooh. That's that? heavy. Dude, this thing is amazing. Velour seats, look at that. Well, it's got all the padding still on this side. It's a good seat cover. I don't know what this is. Oh, it's the steering wheel cover. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> we'll just leave that off. Yeah, that's Oh, that's dude. Fun. I got, like, aftermarket power windows. What? Is this just a motor that spins the cog? That's some red-green stuff if I've ever seen it. <laughs> yeah, that's like the refined version of a drill. You also have a CB radio. Holy smokes. The floors look really good. The carpet's all still here, so they can't be that bad. There's a saw over there, a propane pan. So, oh, there we go. What's this? I think I found some dog tags. Shiny. I did indeed. What was the guy's last name? Uh, Gold or Gould? Gould. What, was it Dale Gould? Uh, yeah, it was Dale. Well, this is Edward, so. Maybe his dad? Also a Seven Day Adventist set of tags, so. Interesting that that's here at what used to be the Seven Day Adventist school. We yeah. should probably uh take those back to him. Yeah, we'll run up there probably today before we leave give those back to him we wouldn't want to take those away from him yeah. whether they're important or not I'd feel bad having them yeah dude this you got yourself one beautiful truck yep I'm pretty that excited I never thought I'd own a Ford and be happy about it but <laughs> this one is cool in all the right ways and I can look past the batch but in all seriousness Chevy Ford Dodge doesn't really matter if you've got something cool and you're willing to drive it that's what car culture is all about Absolutely. All right, let's put a battery in this thing, see if she fires right off. Just want to run it through its full range of motion. Make sure there's no valves stuck and going to hit the piston. It feels like it's got compression, so I'm not super worried about that. I do anticipate blow-by, judging by this uh, vent cap. It's covered in oil and dust, so... I did see that it uh, it was registering 109,000 miles. 109,000. So she's been around the block. A lot. A lot. <laughs> she's been around a lot of blocks. Uh, oh no, our used battery is too used. <laughs> so does our giant battery fit in this custom made battery tray? Like a glove? Yeah. I nailed it. Let me get my uh, handy implement. dandy bolt stripper. Yeah. Okay, that's installed. Let's uh, go hit the go button. Another crucial step though, of course, before we crank it is to uncover the carb and make sure there's nothing that's gonna fly in there. Choke's open. Someone's been through this or something, or at least sanded it, the choke for some reason. <laughs> A weird thing to sand. Let's go hit the key and see if it does one of these. Oh, oh, <laughs> do it again. Okay, hang on. <laughs> what is up with the theme out here? Is it just stuff doesn't crank, Bill, or something? Oh no. Oh. There's a bunch of toggle switches down below that I just threw, and one of them sort of hammering away at the fuel pump. Which means we're going to disconnect this line right now so we don't pump what could potentially be a good engine full of glue as I learned with the Bronco revival that's a bad move all right flip the clicky button let's see if it moves anything oh tap it again tap it again let it run for a second It moved a little bit and it looks like straight rust water. 
and then it ran dry again. So I think there was just some crap in the lines. Crank her again. Let's see if it's just weird. Okay. Try, try again. Alright, let off. Has that battery got any charge in it? Oh, that could be. Alright, new battery. Let's try this again. Shit, the radiator's full, dude. And it's liquid. Alright, hit it. There we go. Alright. Alright, yeah. That fixes that. Thank God, because I did not want to do a starter today. Oh, me either. I'm going to pull the lead off of the coil and put it here next to the carb to watch for spark while Angus cranks to see if we need to clean our points. Chances are yes, but we'll see. Yeah, no spark. Dang it. Alright, let's pop our cap and rotor off and go ahead and sand those points. So we're going to try and pop this cap off, sand our points. Hopefully it's, they're just a little corroded, not allowing the correct form of contact. Get all the snow in there. Rotor, rotor looks pretty new. Sure does, so do the points. I think that'll do. Alright, get our screwdriver in here. Oh, I see sparks and things, so looks like our points are working. Let's uh, crank it and find out. Go ahead, sir. Oh yeah, good. Tons of spark. Beautiful. Nice, nice good old, good old long orange spark. Yay. So, let's hook that all back up and throw some juice in it and see what she do. <laughs> you look cold. Yeah, that was just to get some blood circulation in my fingers. I'm I not can't, this excited. Dude, not jazz hands. I can't even turn my camera very, like this is all oh. the faster I can zoom in because it's just like froze. Yep, it's cold. It's, it's really cold. All the Texans down there complaining about having 20 degree weather or, or single digits. We had double digits while they had single, but they were double negative digits. <laughs> It was negative 24 the other day. And that's ambient temperature. The wind chill took it to like 40. Iowa State canceled classes that day, which I only seen happen once in my life. In defense of the South, none of their infrastructure is set up for this. Like for them, yeah. this is terrible. Yeah, this is like Armageddon probably. Yeah. Hope you guys are having fun down there. Yeah. The Northerners say hi and welcome to the North, but in the South. We didn't mean to send it, but you can keep it. We've got a little can of two-stroke fuel we're gonna use today. The idea here is that the extra oil, oh hey, you forgot to put the rotor in. You're a rotor. God. <laughs> Cut. I've seen this movie before. I know what happens next. Anyway, we've got some two-stroke oil here. The idea is that the extra oil in the fuel is going to help with that top end lubrication, or therefore lack of. That should be more than enough. Now we go hit the magical button. Get in there, you. Yo. Ka-chow. Uh. <laughs> All right, I guess we hit the key. It's in neutral. Hit it again. She thought about it. Man, we'll let this, well, do we even need to let the starter cool off? It's probably just coming up to temperature, actually. Let's, uh, let's leave it sit for a couple minutes, because that was a long, long pull. That was a long pull right out the gate. It was firing on one cylinder, and then like one, two, and then it went, and then like maybe three or four, so. 50%, that's better than my cup grade. <laughs> you have like, an, uh, you have a like, waterfall of ice in your beard. It's really cold. It's cold enough my face doesn't really want to move anymore, so my already distorted and obnoxious voice has gotten worse. <laughs> Alright, let's try it again. I think she's gonna go. Go for it. Hit it. Hit it. Uh oh. Oh no. 
Uh, the starter doesn't engage suddenly. It kicked the Bendex out and now it's stuck. Can bring a hammer? Well, that's a big son bitch. No damn I say. <laughs> I can like just ever so lightly tap it. Which is Wait, we got a whole toolbox. There might be a hammer in here. Oh, in the in the toolbox of the truck? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh dude. There's a hammer in here. There's a hammer in here. Oh, <laughs> oh no, he's gonna golf club my truck. Let's get this starter working. Oh. Four? Try that. Try it again. All right. Damn it. I'm gonna say it's safe to assume nobody has a Y block starter. Guy, I don't even know if I can get under this truck. There's like an inch of ground clearance between that I beam and uh, the frame. You can kind of get under it under the spring. Can you? But you're gonna be upside down. Good Such is life. Go. I'll give her a go. You wanna be a hero? I'll be a hero. This thing's so sunk in the ground, I don't know if I'm gonna fit under it though, especially with all these coats. All right, thankfully we have an axis cover down here. Get our tank tools ratchet out. I thought we could do the whole thing with the pliers, but apparently not. Pop this cover off, see if I can get a screwdriver on that Bendix. Ugh, this is awful. Ugh, got it. I will say though, well, as for like the comfort of laying on the ground, it's nice and squishy in the winter. It's very soft. Okay. That exactly one Kevin in overalls tall. <laughs> I was just touching everything the whole time. She moved around a little bit with a screwdriver, threw some PB blaster on her. We'll see if I was able to get the teeth to do something. I don't know. Well, that didn't work. Nope. Let's go ahead and pop that starter off. It doesn't look that bad. And we'll go clean it up and make sure we have a working starter and then try this again. Today we are doing the entirety of this revival using exclusively our Tang Tools portable tool kit. I custom ordered this kit from tangtoolsusa.com. You can buy the case and then use their modular systems to either get individual trays like this or trays that fit the whole thing or buy one of their totally pre-assembled kits I definitely suggest having one of these for road trips and whatnot, or even as a toolbox to carry on a truck, or even as a toolbox, because we can do this entire video off of that set of tools in a case the size of a briefcase, which even has wheels and a nice little handle that extends out the other side of it. Thank you, sir. Don't thank me. Thank Tang Tools at tangtoolsusa.com. Do I have to go to the website? Can I just call them? Well, you can probably just call them, but it's probably a lot easier to go to the website. Do they want to hang out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah they probably want to hang out you know their customer service is really good if you break a tool you just simply send them an email with a photo of it and they'll send you a new one in the mail so if i break you they'll send me a new one or you are break, you saying i'm a break tool, a tool and... ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> so funny. Yay. Hey. yay morty dong 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 <laughs> church time kids <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you saw that. <laughs> so funny. Holy crap. Because we're at a church. <laughs> God, you're a genius, you know that. <laughs> it's the eight starter adventure, Morty. It's a seven day adventure, Morty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll be, we're done. All right, there's all our bolts. Let's see if we can get this sucker out of here. Oh, yeah. Came right loose. Yeet. There we go. All right. There it is. Isn't that weird? Right, let's see if we can take some PP blaster now. I think this can's a little low. <laughs> Just maybe. There's some spur gear. Oh. 
That looks like it was supposed to do that. This is some straight up 1964 engineering, man. Let me tell you. Well, that spring in the gear is probably for engagement. And then there's this ratchet system for when it starts, but how does it return? It's a fine question, sir. <laughs> okay, I figured out what's going on. So right here, there's a spot that looks like it's machine different. I don't think you guys are gonna be able to see it. But just know, if you go around this ring on a wide block starter, there's one spot where these teeth end, and you can see it's machined, and in there is a little ball as a retent. And what it's supposed to do is get up to RPM, and that ball will stick to the wall, and it will slide back up. What we're having issues with is that ball not flinging outwards. So it's an RPM based thing. Maybe the starter, yeah, flat. Maybe the starter's too worn out to spin fast enough to stick that. I don't know. Ta da! That's all it takes. All right, let's go wrestle this thing back in there. The seven days technology starter adventure. The seven day starter adventure. Seven day starter adventist. Get it, internet? Because we're at the Seven Day Adventist Church. What's left of it? Huh? 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 It's not trying to, like, make fun of any religions. We're just doing plays on words here. That's all. All right. We somehow managed to get all three bolts in on the first try. Like, honestly, that was really easy. Oh! And there went the starter nut into the snow, and I have no idea where it is. Oh! I think it's right there. Oh my gosh! Being like two degrees outside, this is going really well. <laughs> I got it. Thank you, sir. Welcome. I'm gonna go gloveless for this one. Brave man, you. I did that once. Brave and dumb. I died. What? My toes feel like Lincoln logs. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Yay. We got a starter. Go for it. Hmm. I think that was just me with feeling issues. That's a lot of fuel. Go for it. Oh, let's pull the choke. Go ahead. Hey, hey, hey. She kind of runs. Yay. Angus is excited. Fingers! <laughs> <laughs> She's full. Bloop, 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 bloop. All right, go for it, sir. Great. She's not running all eight, and I think that might be our weird Y block spark plug thing where they're all bolted to the back of the block and then loomed together in a, the Leakomatic 9000 mode, but it kind of runs. It does. Let's try it again. All right. Clear. Yep. <laughs> Godly amount of fuel to rev. Like squeezing as hard as I can. <laughs> any chance you had any oil pressure on the gauge? Yeah, it moved. Did it move? 
Yeah, it's still going down. Let's watch it again, see what we got for oil pressure. Okay, you tell me when. Go for it. What'd you see on the gauge? Well, she went pretty darn close to 60. Damn. It is cold. It is cold. But that one still dropped down to like 30. So Hell that's yeah. Pretty, that's pretty healthy uh, oil pressure. That is, I'm okay with that. Let's uh pull your choke. See if she'll idle. All right, hit it. Maybe move around. That is. Do you want to see if you can stick in gear if anything happens? Yeah, I'm. I'm curious about this clutch. drove out of its hole after nine years and at two degrees Fahrenheit this Ford not um you might want to put it back it's going back in the hole oh, Angus no. <laughs> <laughs> no I'm going back to bed <laughs> it just showed me it was like oh no I've got a taste of these idiots never mind you know the birds chirping in the background really make it seem like it's a lot warmer out than it is what is the temperature right now February 17th. It is. Dude, it's 9 degrees. Wow. That is the warmest we've seen in two and a half weeks with a differentiation of like 30 degrees from the coldest. All right, we're going to put some gas in here and start flushing it out with the electric pump to see if we get some clean gas to come out the front. And if not, we cry. Did you turn the pump on, sir? Yes, I can. I'll watch here. Oh, she's crying. Oh, there's some poop. Looking good. Huh. Off. On. Off. I'm trying to clean the filter out. On. Off. The filter's a little cleaner now. I mean, this car needs rebuilt anyway, so. I am not at all scared about pumping glue through it though. Now the chance that the needle and seat are going to work? Slim. Slim. <laughs> Go for it. She's bypassing. It's working. Yay. Kill it. Sweet. Let's see if this thing will dry. Alright dude. Yeah, let's see if you can make it out of here. <laughs> yeah, you might be better off backing up. All right, try two. Did 
Dude, these glass packs on the bumper are just hanging there. There's no exhaust. Hang on. We're gonna go to the gas station get some gas. We'll be right back and try this again. Fuel! Fuel indeed. <laughs> Made sure the paint was nice and flammable. <laughs> yeah, it's just all over the side. Oh god. Yep, fire. That ought to do it. Maybe. Maybe. Killing me! Well, winch is out of battery already. My cable's getting all twisted up from going in an angle. It's not good. We need to uh, reassess, figure out a new plan. We made it a ways though. Sure did. A lot farther than I thought. All right, let's see if the EcoBoost with poopy summer tires can pull a trailer chained to a strap hooked to a 64 Ford buried in the snow up a hill through a foot of snow. I just kind of like hope it doesn't work so it doesn't stroke your ego too much, but at the same time, I do hope it works. I'm tired of messing with this. Uh, Ford, if you see this, you can send me my check for marketing in the mail. Thank you. If it works. <laughs>
trailers never left a truck behind me. A Ford, hey yeah, a Ford, junkyardix1 at gmail.com. I take PayPal or check. So that's going to do it for episode one of Angus's F100 that we have pulled out of the snowbank where it sat for the last nine years. What do you say we take her to the shop and start working on getting some brakes and some charging system and all that good stuff going? You know, just about everything it needs to be a truck? Yeah, just about. Yeah, we can get started on that. So we're going to take this to the shop and finish that next. You guys can see that in episode two. Make sure you subscribe to see episode two. Every subscription, like, and comment helps us bring you guys more free content right here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to all of our friends, Wacky Garage, Junkyard Mook, Thunderhead 289, Dylan McCool, Classic Mustangs 429, DeBoss Garage, Cars and Cameras, and Vice Grip Garage. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. How the hell do we get this home? Uh...